Good evening here, my name is Envato from Terrace News TV, leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Namdi Kanu has revealed six facts to prove that President Muhammad Buhari has been replaced by an imposter known as Jubril Amin New All Sudani. Politics NGR gathered that in a broadcast from Israel on Saturday, Kanu said, in the past few days, the presidency of Nigeria has worked very hard to put a spin on the credible revelations that the man passing off as president of Nigeria is not Bahari but a Jibril from Sudan. The spin runs like this, that Bahari does not have a clone or that Jibril is not Bahari's clone or that Bahari has not been biologically cloned. Even Jibril himself, during his current trip to Poland, claimed that he is the real Bahari, not a clone. The standard qualification to becoming a successful body double or impersonator is close resemblance to the person being impersonated. In other words, the political decoy is an individual who has been selected because of strong physical resemblance to the person being impersonated. This resemblance can be strengthened by plastic surgery. Often, such decoys are also trained to speak and behave like the person being impersonated. It has happened before in history most notably with Joseph Stalin of defunct Soviet Union and Adolf Hitler of Germany. There were many others, especially during the Second World War and the subsequent Cold War, when it was very rampant with spies and espionage. In this very case of late Bahari, Jibril is not a biological clone but a body double, another human being, an impersonator from Sudan, who resembles Bahari, then underwent a few plastic surgeries to make the resemblance closer and got coached to speak and act like the real Bahari. What they never reckoned with is that there are no two individuals that look exactly alike, except for identical twins, even so to a less than absolute degree. So, even as Mr. Jibril looks like late Bahari and did some few fixes to enhance the resemblance, there are still a few give always that, to a discerning eye, differentiated the two men. First, Bahari was about 75 years when he assumed the presidency in 2015. He looked very much his age, and appeared noticeably frail shriveled due to the ravaging ailments that eventually saw to his demise. On the other hand, Jibril is about 50 years old and it shows in his gait, his vibrancy, and the smoother tone of his face and skin. There's also the slight difference earlobes between the two men. Second, Bahari had noticeably receding hairline on the front crown and the rest of what was left of his hair was brittle, and then towards the tail end of his life, the hair became very scanty and snow white. All these can be verified from his photographs taken during the election earring campaigns, at the time he was sworn and during his long illness. This contrasts sharply with Mr. Jibril, who appears to have full mane of hair, much darker hairlines, and now permanently spots a cap that he has refused to remove despite repeatedly being dared to do so. Third and perhaps most importantly, the late Bahari was of Fulani full blood and he spoke fluent full food, the native tongue of the Fulanis. He also spoke Horsa. Now, this Jibril does not speak full food but speaks horse only, which is why he strains to speak horse as a diversion each time he is challenged to speak full food. One then wonders why Jibril, claiming to be the real Bahari in Poland, did not speak some full food or even go as far as removing his cap. Fourth, since February last year, one notices a profound distance when in public between Jibril and Bahari's family members, especially Bahari's wife. Aisha and son Yusuf. Whereas, Aisha appears to be studiedly aloof from Jibril, Yusuf was photographed awkwardly shaking Jibril's hand after he returned from his long stay at a German hospital, where he had been admitted and treated for injuries stemming from his bike accident. Fifth, Bahari was a very tall person, noticeably taller than other equally tall public officials such Senate President Saraki, who now appears taller than the man claiming to be Bahari. How come? It was Lay I. Mohammed, the Minister of Information who tried to explain this by claiming that Bahari used to wear high-heeled shoes, which he now no longer wears on the advice of his doctor, thus making him appear shorter. Is that plausible? Sixth, since his acclaimed recovery from his debilitating ailments and discharge from the London hospital, the man that claims to be Bahari has not been travelling to London for mandatory follow-ups. 
Is it medically possible that someone who was ravaged to the point of looking skeletal and underwent complex surgeries would suddenly heal to the point that he no longer needed clinical follow-ups? Plus, when this Gibral story persisted in the wake of his US visit with President Trump, his handlers tried to defuse it by orchestrating a medical checkup stopover in London. If such checkups are real, why isn't this being done on a regular basis since his so-called recovery? So, the you have it, Jibril from Sudan is not a biological clone of Bahari but a completely different fellow impersonating the real but late Bahari on the dummy that he's a lookalike who underwent some cosmetic fixes that appear to have convinced many that he's Bahari. Still, the truth is that Jibril neither the Bahari nor his clone. <laughs> yes, I, um, a lot of people uh, uh, hoped that I, I was dead <laughs> and hoped I died. And uh, poor vice president, I had some sentiments starting to make asking for, for whether he should consider him to be the vice president because I was dead. <laughs> the boss had embarrassed him a lot because. Um, Real news sounds like a Nigerian scam emails. <laughs> I'm supposed to do a Nigerian accent here. So, uh, uh, dear sir, uh, I am a real president who is <laughs> trapped in my country because they all think I am a clone. Please send me $10,000. <laughs> That's pretty good. I mean, I'm sorry. It says that. Now, we're supposed to believe he's not a clone, but I don't know. Because you know if the CIA did have that technology, they're going to test it on an African first. You don't just try that out on rich white people. The CIA chief is going to be like, this might not work the first time, so find me someone who doesn't matter. The president of Nigeria? Uh, yes, that's perfect. And finally, once again, we need to...